Hey everyone, this is Christine Vallis, and I'm coming to you live from beautiful Flagler College in St. Augustine, Florida, and I see a beautiful set of doors behind me, and so we thought it was a perfect setup for the chalkboard teaching for Tishri, the intro, as we enter in to the beginning of a new month, a new season, and a brand new year, 5784, the year of the door. So as you watch the chalkboard teaching, I pray you consider the year of the door as you move through Tishri with Jesus. Thanks for tuning in and be blessed. Welcome to the Chalkboard Teaching for the New Biblical Month we are entering into. It is the month of Tishri, and the name Tishri means beginning. So we are beginning a new month and also a new season, the season of fall, and also we are beginning a whole new year. So let's receive this fresh start and fresh revelation from the Lord. My name is Christine Vallis, and I'm blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you guys here in real time. So thank you so much for tuning in. So this new year on God's calendar is called Rosh Hashanah. And I'm sure a lot of you may have heard about that. It actually means head of the year. And it's when that civil calendar turns over, the numerical year actually changes. And this number is actually based on the creation or the physical birth of the earth. This is Rosh Hashanah. Now, some of you may recall that there is another new year on God's calendar, and that is in the spring in the month of Nisan. And that is the spiritual birth of the earth, and that is based on our redemption at Passover, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. So that makes this month of Tishri the first month of the physical calendar year where things are beginning and the seventh month of the spiritual year where things are ending. So we want to pay attention to things going on in our lives and let's note as many things may be ending and may be beginning simultaneously at the same time yet in perfect order as the Lord would have it. So Tishri 1 begins this new year and we will hear many shofars going off in congregations and synagogues around the world and in many Jewish homes and even Christian homes people will be dipping their apples in honey celebrating a sweet and fruitful new year and many will even be partaking of a round challah bread on Rosh Hashanah which actually is supposed to be a depiction or in the shape of a crown showing the, the kingship of God. And I believe the Lord wants to encourage us and remind us of his kingship and that when Jesus was on the cross, he wore a crown of thorns and his death, burial, and resurrection defeated death and it defeated sickness. So we don't have to fear. So let us cast our fear onto the Lord and move forward with joy in his great victory. And you know, if we study out the numbers, we can gain prophetic insight. So the number 80 in the Hebrew alphabet is connected with the Hebrew letter pay. And that is a picture of a mouth an opening, it means to decree and declare. And so the Lord was reminding us and is reminding us throughout this whole decade of the 80s that death and life are in the power of our tongue and out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we need to guard our heart. And so, you know what? We shouldn't have been surprised, really, that the enemy would come and attack our mouths and our breath, you know? And so the Lord wants to encourage us and say, you know, the word of God cannot be bound. All right, so the tribe associated with this month is Ephraim. And I believe the Lord wants to encourage us here in the beginning of the month, beginning of the season, and especially in the beginning of the new year, because Ephraim's name means double fruit for 
our future. So the Lord, I believe, wants to remind us as we start the year of his covenant that he made with us. And that is that we are blessed to be a blessing. We are to have enough and extra bread and seed, even double fruit for our future. And you know what, guys? We do not need to fear the future because God is for us. He is not against us. And his promises are not yes and no and maybe. No. The word says in 2 Corinthians 1.20, says that all of the promises of God are yes and amen to those who believe in him. Right? So let's bless the Lord and let's get into his word and forget none of his benefits and make this declaration of truth with assurance. So now the month of Tishri is full of feasts and fasts and shofar blasts. And you could read all about those feasts in the Old Testament in Leviticus 23. Tishri is also known as a month of the high holidays. And as we go through the chalkboard teaching, you'll see that this truly is a month of returning and rejoicing. So right at the top of the month, Tishri 1, this is the Feast of Trumpets and the shofar blasts repeatedly. And the shofar blasts as a spiritual wake-up call to believers and non-believers alike. And this was a day in Jewish tradition where the books were open and the focus of the Jews were to get their name written in the book of life. But now we are under a new covenant and we discover that Messiah Jesus fulfilled the law for us. And Romans 10 declares that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. So our names are then written in the Lamb's book of life forever sealed and we never have to wonder again. And so here in this month of Tishri, the Lord wants us to start the year in the best way possible. And that is knowing that we are his. He's always calling us and drawing us to himself, to that relationship with him. So let's kick off the year, right? Making this most important decision and declaration of all confessing him as the Lord of our lives. Now, these first 10 days of the month of Tishri are known as the days of awe. And the Lord is calling us in this season to return to our absolute source, which is him himself, right? And, you know, even as his children, we are like sheep and we go astray, right? But we have a good shepherd, who guides us in the way that we should go. And he leads us on the path of righteousness for his namesake. And we even see that depicted here in the Hebrew letter that's connected to the month. It is the Hebrew letter Lamed. And this is a picture really of a shepherd's staff and the Lord gently leads us and guides us, speaking his truth and love over us, showing us where we've been off track and calling us to turn and return to him and his ways. And you know, it's the kindness of our good shepherd that leads us to repentance. Here we see on the 10th day of this month of Tishri, we will hear the shofar blast once again, calling us to repent here on the day of Yom Kippur. And before we get into exactly what Yom Kippur is, let's look at this word repentance itself for a little bit. Because, you know, repentance always gets a bad rap. I think just hearing the word repent, we just cringe. We don't want to do it, you know. But it's just another deception of the enemy. Because repentance actually brings peace with God. When we turn our hearts, when we give our lives over to Him, we have peace. We have relationship with Him. And the reality is, guys, this is a gift. 1 John 1 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and we, he will forgive us our sins and purify us for all our unrighteousness. That's what brings us into right relationship with God. So repentance really is this act of turning our eyes off of ourselves 
and getting them back on the Lord and our identity in Him as believers. It's stopping and turning from trying to figure out everything in our own flesh, trying to figure things out on our own terms, really, and getting back on track and walking by the Spirit. So maybe we've been walking in fear, right? Or maybe we've been exchanging the truth of God for a lie. Or maybe we've been speaking, but not using our voice in wisdom. So the Lord would encourage us right now and say to us as believers, hey, you are better than that. <laughs> you have the resurrection power of Jesus living in you. And as believers, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So tap into that perfect love which is within you and it will cast out all fear. Know who you are. Know that you are loved by me and let's go forward. <laughs> that is the gift of repentance. Oh my goodness. So thank you, Lord, for this gift that brings peace and rest with you. Because the Lord, you know, he wants us to move forward with no hindrances, right? And even as we look at this chalkboard, this flow here, he doesn't want there to be any obstacles. And, you know, even the word tishri means ever flowing streams. So just this flow with no obstacles, allowing the Holy Spirit to flow freely in our lives, to be free from doubt in our relationship with Him. And as the Word says, the path of the righteous is smooth and it grows brighter and brighter. So we have a bright future in Him, guys. And repenting brings refreshing Acts 3.19 says, repent and turn to Jesus and receive times of refreshing. What a gift repentance is. So now back to the day of Yom Kippur, which literally, literally means the day of covering. It is a fasting day on the biblical calendar. And this is a day in Jewish tradition when the books were closed and the deeds of man's actions would be weighed. And this is depicted actually in the constellation this month. It is Libra and the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and all the constellations point to Messiah Jesus. So here Libra are these weighing scales, right? And we know that God is a righteous judge and he uses a just scale. But you know, we would always come up short according to his law. So he set up a system in the Old Testament where a blood sacrifice would cover the sins of Israel. So once a year on the 10th day of Tishri on Yom Kippur, the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies and offer an atoning blood sacrifice to cover the sins of Israel. But you know, in Hebrews, it tells us that we have now a new and better covenant. So I encourage you guys to read the book of Hebrews, especially chapters 8 through 10. And we'll see in Hebrews 9 that it tells us that our good shepherd was also our high priest and the perfect atoning sacrifice. He laid down his life for us, his sheep, all because of his great love for us. And... Hebrews 10 goes on to say that Jesus' blood was much better than the blood of any animal. And his blood was offered once for all. And it not only just covered the sins of Israel for that year, but it erased the sin of the whole world forever, past, present, and future. And the word says he remembers our sins no more. So it goes on to say where there is the remission of sins, there is no more offering needed. And so Jesus confirmed this promise when he declared it is finished on the cross. He took on our sin so that we can take on his righteousness. A divine exchange takes place when we receive him. And so under this new and living way, he then puts his his word in our hearts and in our minds. And so we can come into his presence. We can come into the Holy of Holies with 
boldness. How awesome is this? He is the way maker. And this is just reason for rejoicing, right? And it comes right on time because here on the 15th day of the month of Tishri, we hear the shofar blast out once again on the full moon of Tishri 15, calling us to rejoice in a week long festival known as the Feast of Tabernacles. It is also known as the Feast of Sukkot, which means tents, so feasts of tents. And the Lord calls us to set up our sukkah or our tent and rejoice and remember how he cared for his people those 40 years as they dwelled in tents in the wilderness. And he also calls us now to remember how he takes care of us as we are here journeying with him here on the earth in our earthly tents, right? Great is his faithfulness. Let us rejoice here during this Feast of Tabernacles. And you know, I think that this is my most favorite feast of all because I just love setting up a tent. I mean, who doesn't really love a tent? You know, so so let us enter into this great festival and rejoice and set up our tents. Now, speaking of tents, I want to um, bring to our remembrance last month in Elul, we learned that the king was in the field, right? And that was a picture of Jesus, how he left his heavenly palace and set up his tent or his sukkah in our fields, right? Here in the earth, all because of his great love for us. And now here in Tishri, during tabernacles, he is calling us to set up our tent and emulate the king and follow his example as sojourners on earth, being in the world, but not of it. And he's calling us to love one another as he has loved us by his spirit, as he talks about in John 13. And by his love, we will be known. And in this great love, Jesus found joy. And in this, we too will find great joy. So let's celebrate the love of God and loving one another in and out of our sukkahs this month. Now, one last note on the Feast of Tabernacles is that we actually see Jesus celebrating this feast in the Gospel of John. And Jesus made a declaration that many of us have heard and, and know probably this passage of scripture, but may not have put it in its proper context. So check out John 7, uh, starting in verse 37, where it says that this is the last day of the great feast. And it's referring to the feast of tabernacles and it was during a water pouring ceremony where they would pray annually for the outpouring of rain at that very moment jesus opened up his mouth and said these words he said if anyone is thirsty let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scriptures say from his innermost being will flow rivers of living waters. He was speaking of the Holy Spirit and he is speaking of that right now to us. And you know, when we believe upon Jesus and receive him, he seals us with the Holy Spirit. But then he calls us to more, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which empowers us and activates that well of living waters within us so that we can do works and even greater works as Jesus said. So also, you know, in this decade of 5780, where the Lord is highlighting the importance of our mouths, may we release this heavenly language, praying to the Lord spirit to spirit, praying in tongues as the spirit gives us utterance. So if you've been neglecting this gift, or if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is ask the Lord, and he will baptize you with his spirit and he will not withhold any good thing from you. Let's hear his words afresh from Psalm 81 that says, open your mouth and I will fill it. Now in closing, these feasts that we just talked about are the last feasts on the Lord's calendar. 
We had four feasts in the spring, and those were Passover, unleavened bread, the feasts of first fruits, and Pentecost, and all of those feasts have already been fulfilled in Jesus' first coming. And so here in the month of Tishri, in the fall, these last three feasts have yet to be fulfilled and perhaps will be fulfilled by his second coming. So let us listen to the shofar and let us awaken our hearts to the promise of his sure return. And perhaps it is the feast of trumpets that will bring in the rapture of the church and Yom Kippur, which will usher in his second coming and the feast of tabernacles, even our millennial reign with him. Now, we are not required to celebrate and enter into any of these feasts and fasts, you know, because we learn that the word says that all we need to do is confess in our hearts and believe on Jesus and we shall be saved. However, from my personal experience, I have found such great joy in entering the appointed times of God because they all point to and celebrate Jesus, our Messiah. And you know what? They also draw my heart to him closer and closer every year as I enter in. And so I have been so blessed. So we don't have to celebrate the feasts we get to celebrate the feast. So I encourage you guys to consider entering into these feasts here in this month of Tishri. And so Lord, we thank you for bringing us into this new year and season, Lord. And as the shofar blast, may our hearts awaken to your great love for us, God. And may we not forget all of your benefits, Lord, and may our mouths be open to declare your great love and your faithfulness over our own lives and souls and the world around us, Lord. And may we blast off into this new year in your love, in your confidence, and in your joy. Thanks for listening and blessings as you go forth with Jesus.